be doing the pre-flight for circuits. So the aim of this flight is to understand the techniques and procedures used to fly a standard circuit pattern from takeoff through to landing. So this brief aims to teach you how to fly a standard circuit pattern. Um, specifically, we'll have a look at the Bang Sound Airport um, from takeoff. I'll demonstrate the training and then through to landing. Motivation. The next four lessons are designed to prepare you through demonstration and monitoring for your first solo. Uh, so it's quite exciting. Well, the first time you go on solo is in the circuit area. And circuits implement everything you've learned until now. Uh, climbing, descending, turning, strain level. Uh, and it involves a lot of um, checks and procedures in a short amount of time. So in terms of the airplane, so we'll, have an, we'll use an example of um, Alpha Brown Charlie. Let's say that's our call sign. Our type is we're a Piper Warrior. Our fuel, let's say we've got 110 litres on board. Um, oil, we've got 6 watts. Flight time to be, today will be 1 hour. And ATIS, we've got information uh, delta. So radio calls, so uh, um, in terms of radio calls, um, I'll do most of the radio calls just, so I want you, just because I want you to focus on flying. Um, but then um, you know, if there are some easy radio calls, I will get you to do. Sign up to run us, it'll be done by you. Take off. So I'll, I'll demonstrate the first three circuits, the training and the landing. Then I'll hand over to you on the when we're doing the fourth circuit on the crosswind leg. You'll do the takeoff, training, and then landing. And then taxing and shutdown will be done by you. Make sure request startup circuits. Listen to the ATIS. And of course, startup as the circuit area could be busy, so they'll let us. So in terms of the application, so um, we might try to do circuits on a weather on a day where the weather's good. Because that we've got the threat of weather. You know, we fail to monitor weather and the management technique will be adding such wind. And then desired aircraft state will be, you know, if it's too windy or a loss of control. Um, so make sure you choose to do the circuits on a good day. So first off, you'll start off with your radio call and then you'll do your lights, camera, action checks. So lights all on, transponder alt, um, DI line, wind stop checked and um, checking for any traffic. And then action, smoothly applying full power, doing your rolling checks, standing up in between T's and P's green, airspeed's light. Uh, rotating 60 knots and then you set the airplane's nose on the horizon, maintain a reference point um, and I'll show you as well reference points in flight, uh, apply a bit of right rudder and um, then you'll do your three feet checks, so T's and P's green, full power, flaps retracted, reference point selected, airspeed, 79 knots, 400 feet, clear right, clear centre, clear left, if you're doing your left hand circuits, turn towards the left, and then choose another reference point because you can turn on to crosswind, um, two things could happen, you can either reach uh, 45 degrees to the threshold, um, or you could reach a um, thousand feet. So if you reach a thousand feet, uh, level off using ASPT, or if it's 45 degrees, make a turn onto downwind um, and then choose another reference. Then you'll do your radio call, Alpha Bravo Charlie, downwind touch go. Tower calls either say Alpha Bravo Charlie, follow the traffic, or they'll just acknowledge you saying Alpha Bravo Charlie, you don't need to say. Your maintenance cycle is HHSS, so height, heading, speed, spacing. Height, a thousand feet, heading 110, speed. 105 knots and the spacing rod, that one third wing spacing, and I'll show you. And then you're going to do your pre landing, your bum fish checks, so brakes, undercarriage, mixer, mixture, fuel, instruments, switches, hatches, apparatuses. And then 30 degrees to the threshold, as that threshold appears past training to the wing, carry it on, 1500 RPM. Then um, make sure you verbalize the white arc, remember the threat of air freight damage. Two seconds to flap and make a turn onto base. And then base, you're going to work cycle will be AAA, aim point, attitude, airspeed, aspect. So attitude, half ground, half sky. Airspeed 75 knots and aspect. Remember, power controls airspeed, attitude controls aim point. Then you're going to make a turn onto final, you're going to do AAA. Aim point, airspeed, aspects. Aim point will be about one third over the windscreen, airspeed uh, 70 going down to 65 knots over the threshold, and then aspect, checking too high, too low. Uh, and then you're going to do your three and feet checks. <coughs> um, so, carrying off flaps three, um, and then landing on, and then um, wind top checked, and then checking for the clearance. So facts for can take off and landing performance. So some factors are wind. So uh, headwind will decrease that landing takeoff distance required. Um, whereas no wind will take a lot longer. Weight. So if you've got a solo or a dual flight, so you're solo, I'll be hopping on the airplane. And you'll notice because we've got less inertia, it will stop a lot quicker. Um, and um, you know, versus if you had an instructor with you, you'll need a lot more runway. Um, flaps as well. Uh, flaps you use on landing. Gives us a short take landing distance um, as you can come in a slower speed, and you'll notice in your flap and then go around less, and it takes you a lot longer to land without flaps. Slope. So if you want to um, uh, take off 
uh, upslope, you need a lot more runway as you have to accelerate against the force of gravity versus um, on a level slope. And then surface, if you're stopping in grass, you know, somewhere at the oaks versus at Bankstown, you'll stop a lot quicker uh, for the same exact conditions because you've got the grass to slow you down. And then air density, so uh, the high and high airport, um, your landing roll would uh, take a lot, sorry, your takeoff roll um, would take a lot longer. Uh, since you've got a hot air, you need to fly a little bit faster to get the required lift. Um, so you'll notice that on the Bankstown at a day where it's 10 degrees versus 35 degrees. So actions to take um, if you're high on approach, so if you're high, um, you can just lower the nose because remember, power controls airspeed and attitude controls the airspeed. Two situations requiring go around, so it could be um, if you're not lined up by 400 feet um, or if there's any traffic um, on the runway. And that's one of the threats that exist. Yeah, it will be not identifying deviations. The management technique will go around AAA and the undesigned aircraft state will be misleading. So a threat will be in terms of having an unstable approach um, and um, you know, recommended height to establish a final approach. So it's uh, recommended to be 500 feet. Um, yeah, that your approach, your establishing approach by 500 feet. So competence is no competence is for lesson, but a few things I'll be assessing as part of the part 61 manual status to complete. Checks in accordance with checklists, I found that really thoroughly. Being plus or minus one and a half minutes from sunline during taxi, so make sure that yellow sunline goes in between your legs. Plus or minus two minutes from sunline during takeoff, so apply that right rudder and make sure you maintain sunlight. Maintain the height and spacing, so using the HHSS and workload management, because we've got that threat of increased workload. Management will be prioritised and undecided for us every loss of situation awareness, so make sure you manage the error of um, you know, losing that situation awareness. Um, by prioritizing tasks and seeking instructor assistance as well since you know initially circuits can be a handful but over time you'll get used to that workload so how do we transfer control so using the handing over taking over method and then procedures and downwind so doing all the um, you know your ready call your maintenance cycle um, so HHSS and pre-landing and then doing the approach configuration make sure you have a good thorough lookout because we've got the thorough traffic error be failed to identify traffic and the undesigned aircraft state will be air proximity, so make sure you manage the um, threat of um, um, so you manage the threat of traffic by having good effective lookout, listening to tower, and you know in the circuit area you can really predict where traffic is since it's just flying a standard circuit pattern, but really make sure you don't get too close to it as well. Um, and then smooth but firm control inputs, no abrupt movements. So thank you all so much for listening to the pre-flight. And I'll see you in the next one.